So let's arm up on the streets of Chicago with Arnold Schwarzenegger in one of his least successful and less typical films of his heyday with Raw Deal. Former FBI agent Mark Kaminsky, forced to resign from the Bureau due to excessive violence, is now relegated to being a small-town sheriff and is left at odds with his wife, Amy. That is, until his friend FBI Chief Harry Shannon comes to him after a mob hit on protected witness results in the death of his son. Kaminsky is thus tasked with taking down Petra Vita, the powerful and ruthless head of organized crime in Chicago, with the promise of reinstatement to the Bureau, if successful. Kaminsky eagerly accepts the challenge and prepares to infiltrate and tear apart the Petra Vita machine without the consent, knowledge, or protection of any law enforcement agency. Along the way, under his persona of Joseph Brenner, Kaminsky becomes involved with Monique, the beautiful informant of the Petra Vita organization who may ultimately have her loyalties challenged. Now using his own brand of justice, Mark Kaminsky delves into the murderous world of the mob and will stop at nothing until every single mafioso in Chicago is burned to the ground. So released to theaters on June 6th of 1986, Raw Deal, as I said, was one of the least successful films of Arnold Schwarzenegger's career, which is saying quite a bit considering this was released between the very big blockbuster hits of Commando and Predator, and there's probably a number of different things that go into attributing to the lower box offices this film took, with a $11 million budget gaining $18 million at the box office, not being as successful as some of the other films that Arnold had been churning out at that period of time, and just the fact that Going into Raw Deal was pretty much a contractual obligation for Arnold with producer Dino De Laurentiis, who Arnold really just didn't quite get along with terribly well, and was probably going to be forced into doing another Conan film, but really kind of wanted to do something different. And so Dino pretty much had this script sitting around and whatnot, this concept sitting around, and decided to just kind of plug Arnold into it, and things kind of go off on a bit of a different beat with this film than what you saw with a lot of different Arnold films before this and after this that he's playing a very different type of character and a very different type of film than what we normally associate an Arnold Schwarzenegger film with. And I kind of look at Raw Deal as sort of a Charles Bronson type of film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger bringing in his own style of wit and humor and charisma to really kind of make it a little bit more like his type of film. But still, it feels very much like a Charles Bronson Death Wish movie or something like that where a guy who got extradited from his old job now has to go in and be very vigilante, go undercover, do a lot of stuff with organized crime, which was very much not terribly much what Arnold would do in a lot of his different films. It was very much like very strong military type of guys or going into a bit of a sci-fi action type of thing. Stuff like that. And it's very interesting that Arnold kind of in a feature that I saw about this, that Arnold really kind of wanted to go in this film, play a character that's a little bit more towards what he is naturally, instead of playing a cyborg or a barbarian or a commando or sort sorts at this point in time, and really kind of get a very nice modern wardrobe, wearing very expensive suits, instead of army fatigues or punk outfits or stuff like that, he was able to kind of make this character of Mark Kaminsky in the film very similar to what he is in real life with obviously more exaggerated parts for the dramatic license of the film but we really kind of kind of see that there is a bit of a hedonistic quality with the character as he gets into the undercover type of world amongst all these mafiosos and all this type of stuff they really kind of see that yeah it really kind of seems a little bit more natural Arnold but there is still an amount of limitation with what they can do with Arnold in this setting this type of film with some of the dialogue that he has to put out there, which sometimes Arnold does struggle with in the film. But I think in this film that Arnold Schwarzenegger does a lot of things to really kind of carry the film on a much better type of level than some other people might have been able to do that. I feel like if you didn't have someone like Arnold coming into the film, adding his own wit, his own charisma, his own humor, that type of stuff, the film could have gotten a little bit dry in places if you didn't have someone that could bring that kind of quality and that kind of enthusiasm to a certain point into the film. 
really could kind of be a little bit monotonous, a little bit boring, a little bit too monotone in a certain way, but Arnold can kind of keep it a little more interesting, a little bit more exciting. He can keep going on with his performance in this film where he hits a few walls here and there where he can't quite stretch out as much as the character probably would uh, require him to do. So it is a bit of an odd fit for Arnold Schwarzenegger to come into this type of film and have this type of character where I don't think his acting quality and ability had really kind of gotten as far along as it eventually would to kind of be a little bit better like you would get something like True Lies or whatnot where he could really kind of hit off a lot of different beats and be a bit more versatile in how he could deliver a performance in the film with the right type of director. And director John Irvin is not a director who's had even a lot of major credits to his name. He did the film Ghost Story before this and later did the Patrick Swayze film Next of Kin and the film Hamburger Hill as well. So a few things here and there but nothing colossal in a certain way. To really kind of say that this was a definitely strong type of director to really kind of bring something extra to the table of this film. But I still think John Irvin does a fine job adding some qualities in this film to really make it decent but not exceptional in a certain way but certainly looking at Arnold's work in this film in a little bit more in detail here I think they did eventually try to forge the film, forge the script a little bit more towards Arnold's style adding in some signature traits that really kind of stand out as like that's definitely something from an Arnold Schwarzenegger film like early on right when he gets into the undercover work and he goes into the sort of back room type of uh, gambling establishment and then plows through it. That just seems absolutely entirely Arnold and it's one of those moments in the film that I've always loved since the first time I saw this film many 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 years ago that just like that's so much in the sly wit of what Arnold can bring to a film just add a little bit more of a punch up to things kind of exaggerate the reality of the film just kind of go a little bit further with it just make it a little bit more fun and entertaining in a certain way just do something that's a little bit unpredictable and just make it just a fun moment in the film that Arnold does bring a sense of fun to many different moments in the film just adding a bit of a, a smooth sly wit to it that really doesn't seem like again a terribly good character that would fit for Arnold but in certain cases he really does add something to that type of character who has to be kind of a, a smooth player and really kind of a, a guy who can make a really good splash to all this organization that really just does a lot of good things and really kind of convince you enough that he kind of works in this film in a certain degree that there's just certain moments where he just adds in that slyness, that cleverness, all these things that you really kind of associate with Arnold but kind of adapts it to this different type of character to be a bit smoother in a certain way, kind of be slightly kind of James Bondish in a certain fashion here that really has a good quality going about him throughout the whole film and just, uh, there are moments in the film where he just tries to bring out a little bit of that genuine type of heart and emotion and certain qualities with this character that really kind of makes you engage with him to a certain degree that you see in the beginning of the film that him and his wife Amy do, do not get along at all because he had all his trouble with the FBI before and he got exiled into this little podunk town being the sheriff of it and his wife is not happy at all about it and they have these clashing with the great line of you should not drink and bake and you just see how the character of Harry Shannon is able to tap into that sort of frustration that the character of Kaminsky has here to kind of give him that open door to step through to get back to where he was as a prominent member of the FBI so it's a very interesting progression this character takes that I think Arnold does a fine job at in this film that you see later on that he kind of takes a liking to this sort of undercover lifestyle with the fancy clothes and all the money, all this type of stuff. So it's like, it's a very interesting thing that you can kind of see that they put into the script that I think Arnold pulled off on a very good note that even if there is stuff that Arnold is not quite terribly adept to really kind of uh, hit on or draw out of the entire film, I think overall he adds more to the film that he than he detracts at all. That again, the charisma, the fun qualities that he kind of injects into the film overall just by his input and his presence there overall and just his natural charm that he has. I think all those things add and benefit the film more than anything that he has a limitation to really kind of not make it reach as good as it possibly can be. But just like I think Arnold does a fine job here that I think in between all these are films, Terminator and 
Commando and definitely Predator. It is a bit of an odd thing to have him go in this film and not quite hit on his strengths as an actor here, but it certainly is probably that point in time where it's like, He's probably trying to test things out, seeing what might work, what might not work. So it's like an interesting experiment for him to go into this thing and see. It really kind of feels good to him, but obviously since he never really did anything terribly like this again, certainly feels more like it's just a happenstance, a sort of fluke type of film that he ended up doing because of the contractual obligations and just circumstance overall just having this project available at the time where he just really wanted to dissolve his partnership with Dino De Laurentiis. But just like... Arnold's not phoning anything in. He's putting in a genuine effort here to do as much as he can with the quality of his acting that he has at this point in time. And he does have a very good supporting cast in this film. Just watching this again, I was just so impressed by just having a very solid set of actors to put forth very strong performances that really make it not just an Arnold show. Obviously, he is the main attraction here, but everyone else holds up their end of the film very very reliably and very solidly as well. And you got Catherine Hill here as the character of Monique, who uh, apparently there was originally the desire to have a strong romantic connection between Mark Kaminsky and the character of Monique here, but Arnold kind of nixed that idea and didn't want to kind of delve into a love story in this film. Really kind of keep it on track towards the main focus of the story and still have a affectionate relationship between these two characters that have a bit of a turbulent time in the middle of the film but it's a very good performance that Catherine Hill puts on here with a character that is charming and certainly has a tough side but also that vulnerable sort of uh, sympathetic side too that is a woman that you first see in the film that she is down on her luck every time she tries to go onto that gambling table she just loses all her money she has no luck whatsoever but Kaminsky takes a shine to her and really kind of Again, makes that kind of splash in the film. He wins all this money at the gambling table and just moves it over to her and walks off. So it's, a, again, that sort of sly quality to him that really kind of creates this sort of relationship that sparks off very well between them. And I think it's a good relationship. They have good chemistry in the film, but I'm kind of glad that they didn't kind of push it all the way towards a very strong romantic thing because I don't know how much Arnold is really kind of capable of selling something that deeply romantic. I think what the, the degree of the beat that they hit between these two characters was really the right degree to go for because Catherine Hill does a very good job in this film. I think everything she really puts forth brings along a very genuine quality about the emotion and the attitude of this character. And you're just kind of seeing all the little things that she has to deal with as being sort of a spy for the organization, but also coming around and being very much loyal to the character here, portrayed by Arnold. So it's like a very good relationship in the film that gives a little bit more of a moment to be genuine, to have a little bit of heart there, show the emotion of the character of Kaminsky here, and really kind of create a nice relationship to really kind of drive forward final, some various points in the film that really just, again, continues to ground the character and you see the genuine character instead of always having to see him as his undercover persona here. And the casting of many of the organized crime figures in the film I think is really well handled that Paul Shannara as Roca in this film just has that sort of confident attitude, but also that sort of a little bit more of a down and dirty quality to him in a certain way, that he is that second tier crime boss that you go to to have the body disposed of or have all the dirty work handled through his men. So it's like perfect little quality with what he brings to the character that kind of have a little bit more down and dirty, but still have that kind of quality that, that you really want from an organized crime figure, but stepping up beyond that Sam Wanamaker portraying Patra Vita just has a great quality overall that he does seem completely authentic and natural that just has that toughness that conviction with him so many different things that he brings to the film just feel absolutely perfectly genuine to everything that he does in this film and obviously Robert Davi was an absolutely fantastic character actor with many of these action films at the time showing up in so many of them especially Die Hard as well but here he plays a great character in Max who is the guy who takes care of things all kinds of things for Roca and Patra Vida here that he just has that great sort of sleazy type of quality to him overall they just like you look at him he looks a tad bit more disheveled a little bit more sleazy a little bit more sloppy in a certain way he's this impulsive violent type of guy who just does everything does the dirty work very dirtily where when you have Kaminsky come in there as his persona of Joseph P. Brenner 
He's a bit more that dirty work type of guy who hands things in a much more clean type of fashion, much more clean cut, efficient, straightforward, using his mind instead of his muscle so much. And uh, it's just an interesting kind of dichotomy and dynamic between Robert Davi and Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film. They really kind of work off each other so very well, having a very uh, conflicted attitude towards one another, very much an adversarial conflict between these two characters. And it's really nice how that progresses how they work off each other in the film. Robert Dye was a very good treat to see in this film. And betraying the rival crime boss of Lemansky here is Stephen Hill, who many people would know from his work throughout the 90s on Law and Order as District Attorney Adam Schiff, who doesn't have terribly much to do in the film. He has a couple of scenes peppered in the film, but it's really kind of like he's the ancillary thing in the film that this is what Patrovita is being motivated to take care of this competition that's kind of sprung up from a guy who used to work for him. So it's like he's kind of put off to the side when the main focus is the character of Mark Kamensky taking on the Patrovita organization. That's kind of something off to the side that is kind of the cog to really kind of allow Kamensky to go in there and try to shake up the Lomansky organization while trying to disassemble the Patrovita organization. So Stephen Hill has a few scenes, but he doesn't have a whole lot to do. But it's nice to notice him in the film, too, and uh, I really like the character portrayed by Ed Lauder in this film, this Detective Baker that he has. Just a few little scenes of the film that just really kind of nails it. This kind of nice charisma and humorous moments that he just has. He just kind of working scenes really well with a nice good few beats. It just shows a good amount of personality that it brings forth. And he seems very enthusiastic for the few beats that he has to work in the film. And also having Darren McGavin in this film, who many people know as Kolchak the Night Stalker, really does a good job in this film as the character of Harry Shannon, that uh, he has a great little beats of emotionality in this film to just sell it. When you see him, when he first meets with Kaminsky in the film, and he shares the information that his son had been killed by these mafiosos, it's a solid emotional beat in the film, and just even at the end of the film after... He's been shot and he's trying to recover and everything. These great little moments where he just shows a lot of emotion and conviction and just a passionate quality to him overall that there is that emotion churning up inside of him that he is so dedicated and so driven to have this organization be burned to the ground that you just see it in every single moment. It's a very solid performance from him and everyone overall in this film really does just hold up everything so well. Even though, like I said, Arnold is kind of limited in what he can do in this type of role, everyone else is completely solid, fills out the characters very richly and solidly overall. I think it's a very good cast put together by director John Irvin and put together with a good script as well that isn't anything new or fresh or radical or whatnot, but it's a solid script that's straightforward, easy to follow storyline that just hits you from A to B to C can move through the film very easily. You don't get complicated with anything that's going on. It's a very straightforward narrative that is handled very well with some very good technical elements to it with a editor that was the one who edited Lawrence of Arabia and the following year edited Masters of the Universe with Ann Coates here that this is probably not the best the uh, quality that you can offer in editing because there was a few beats in the film. Maybe it's because of what the director was pushing forward or didn't quite have uh, the vision to kind of kind of segue between certain moments in the film or just didn't feel like there were quite as good edits in the film but generally with the vast majority of the editing of the film it is very sharp, very tight, very good stuff and the cinematography by Alex Thompson who did marvelous work on Ridley Scott's Legend and Alien 3 does a fine job here with what he has to work with in a film that's not going to allow him to have a lot of artistic expression, a lot of heavy mood and atmosphere like a lot of the other films that he's done tremendous work on throughout his whole career. But with a film that is a straightforward action crime thriller, I think he is a good guy to call on that when you call on someone with that level of talent, you know you're at least going to get something that is competently, intelligently, and confidently shot. And this film definitely is that, that I like a lot of different things in this film with what he does with the cinematography. Like, he definitely knows how to use the cinemascope frame that he uses a lot of wide shots, a lot of wide-angle lenses to really kind of fill up the frame overall and use a lot of good 
solid compositions in this film to really make it like this is a guy who knows how to shoot a film very well and just uses a lot of good fluid motion to kind of move through scenes and give a lot of depth to the frame in a certain way that you can see throughout a lot of the sets, a lot of the depth in the city landscapes overall between the night scenes and some of the daytime scenes as well. You really see the vast landscape and skyline of Chicago, a lot of different moments really kind of show off the city in a certain way and I think it really is important to really kind of showcase the city to a certain degree to kind of give it that feel that it is a big city type of crime organization it really kind of adds a little bit to the flavor of the film especially for someone here who lives in the suburbs of chicago it's a really nice kind of treat to see that in the film and some of the stuff in the film that some of the production design is very much geared towards that sort of 1980s very great corporate type of feel so a lot of the production design is kind of uninspiring doesn't give a lot of punch or flash or give a lot of good stuff to really look at visually but there are a few moments like when you get into the alley scene where the guys jump Arnold you got some great sort of neo-noir type of lighting a great glow to it overall and especially when they get in that one nightclub sequence really get a great vibrant color to that whole thing that is saying that the film very much definitely lacks that could use a little bit more of a flourish a little bit more of a color punch in certain places to kind of give a little bit more intriguing quality visually but I think Alex Thompson does a very solid job putting the action together in this film, creating some very good shots, really good motion, really kind of captures all the excitement of this film very solidly, that there is not a wasted shot, there's not a shot that feels out of place, misframed, anything like that. Everything he puts his lens in front of comes out looking very good overall, despite any of the limitations of maybe a couple of gray, cloudy, overcast moments or... Some of the production design, like I said, geared towards a much more of a monochromatic type of thing. What he does with the cinematography and some of the lighting in the film does a very good job to really kind of get things going on a good solid visual level. And definitely in the climax of the film, once you get all the gun smoke and everything, really creates a bit of a mood as well. So a few moments in the film really gets a moment or two to really kind of draw something out very special, very kind of atmospheric in a certain way but in general the film is very well shot it puts together very good action sequences along with John Irving directing the film in that type of way I think all the things that these people did well did them very exceptionally well and I really really love the music in this film this sort of mid 80s synth rock type of thing they got going on just the theme of this film Kaminsky stomps just has a great vibe to it overall and when you get into that scene where Arnold's arming up and everything, kind of getting all the guns together, you get that great sort of saxophone jumping in to this theme and everything, just kind of gives, gives it that harder type of feel to it, just like great things in this film. They really kind of amp it up, just make it a little bit more energetic. Whenever you got an action beat in the film, that score just pumps in there, gives it a good sense of energy and just overall pulsating quality. That thing again benefits the film that kind of amps it up in a certain way instead of kind of bringing it down like I said some moments in the film could have been very dry if they didn't direct them in the right ways like having Arnold in there with his charisma and everything or adding in this great type of mid 80s score to really kind of give it that kind of punch overall to really kind of amp up the action in the film and just give a little bit more of an attitude in a certain way I think they did a great job with the music of this film overall and just action overall deal that the film does have some sparse action that it really kind of has a lot of moments long stretches where it is just kind of progressing the plot progressing the narrative of the film but the few moments that you do get action it is very very well handled that just when Arnold is getting into a lot of physical combat in this film it's like very different that he is doing a lot more physical combat at the early half of the film that really kind of just is duking it out with guys punch and kick and stuff like that so it's really kind of satisfying that type of way that doesn't get into the weapons action until the third act of the act of the film so it's like very good type of stuff we see Arnold just holding his own or just kind of laying guys out here and there just like very satisfying just get that kind of again not to be punny or whatnot but very raw type of feel about it just visceral type of quality with some of the action here and as it progresses, when you get that car chase on Navy Pier, I think that is very well shot, very well handled, just kind of having the cars crisscross between each other, throwing off shots between guns and everything. I think it's a very exciting sequence that really kind of comes together very well. 
and especially when you get into the third act of this film, which is like one of the best sequences. Everything, the main thing I've always remembered from this film, absolutely, is when Arnold Schwarzenegger as Kaminsky is at his friend Harry Shannon, gunned down, don't know if he's going to live or not, and it's like, this is the moment. All the facades are dropped, the uncover stuff's done, He's ready to go in there and just lay waste to absolutely everyone and just arms up with all those guns and that leather jacket, gets in the convertible, throws satisfaction for the Rolling Stones on the car stereo and goes running around this quarry, gunning guys down with an automatic weapon and everything. It is a fantastic sequence. I absolutely love this scene from this film entirely. I've loved this. It's one of my favorite Arnold scenes of all time because it's just like, it's so perfectly purely Arnold that I don't think anyone else could have pulled this sequence off and had just be like, that is so awesome. I don't think any other action star could have quite pulled it off because it's just, again, that type of quality with what Arnold brings to a film. There's a little bit more exaggerated, a little bit silly, a little bit ridiculous, but entirely, totally awesome with what he does, just putting on the Rolling Stones and just like, I'm just going to throw Rolling Stones on my car there and just go around blowing people up, shooting them down throughout this quarry, Blood going all over the place. I just love the sequence. It is absolutely fantastic. And then even then, when the car gets jammed into the bulldozers and everything, it doesn't stop there. He just keeps going on and mowing guys down, just taking them down all over the place. And just get that little, nice little scene at the end of the thing where he's just kind of looking at his handiwork. Just kind of looking around and is like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And just even then, right into the final sequence of the film, where he just goes in and just going right after Patrick Vieden, the last couple of guys in his organization. And just like, it has almost a Terminator-esque quality to it, where he's just going in there just massacring people. Where he's got the Almac weapon in one hand, the shotgun in the other, that's completely Terminator. And just like a fantastic sequence that just goes full bore into what Arnold Schwarzenegger is completely known about what you're wanting, sitting there waiting the whole film to just see a complete all-out action sequence. And these this one-two punch of just that quarry sequence and just this complete shootout in that organization, in that establishment, and just absolutely fantastic, just gunning guys down, blowing them up, just everything that's done here, just absolutely fantastic, I love it. The climax of this film, just absolutely fantastic, I love every second of it, because it's just, again, you're dropping all the other stuff that might work, might not work, all that type of stuff, you're going straight into the action. It's complete Schwarzenegger. It's completely satisfying. I love every single beat of it. It's just fantastic. And when he gets to the end there, and he's facing down that special prosecutor of Baxter, that he, uh, and the guy who helped get him forced out of the FBI, and all this type of stuff. He's a completely corrupt asshole. Great little moments here. Just all these things kind of build up with the action. Just like, it's all Arnold. It's complete Arnold. It's like, if anything else does not hit for you in this film, these sequences absolutely possibly must hit for you because they're just complete Arnold type of action sequences. Completely embracing that quality that even though, like I said earlier, Raw Deal is kind of a Charles Bronson film with a little bit of Arnold's kind of qualities put into there. I don't think Charles Bronson could have hit this off quite as well as Arnold. That even though Bronson was pretty damn good in the action sequences, there's just no one like Arnold to pull off, especially the quarry sequence, but overall just like, it's just so perfect. It's just so perfect to me overall. Those sequences are just absolutely fantastic to me. How they put everything together, all the cinematography, the editing, everything that's put together, with all the action, the stunt work in the film, just great type of stuff overall. And just like, even the end of the film has a nice little beat to reconnect the characters of Harry Shannon and Mark Kaminsky and just kind of tie up all the loose ends and just resolve everything. I think it's a nice film. I think a raw deal, yeah, it's not... Predator, it's not Terminator, it's not Commando, it's not True Lies, but it's still a fun film that you can really kind of go into it and, like I said, expect something a little bit different from Arnold, but there's enough things in the film that Arnold does, especially him, to really kind of continue to make it engaging, keep it fun, exciting in a certain way that things don't kind of dwell on one part of this story or whatnot. I think it's a nice, evenly paced film. It's a little bit more gradual than other Arnold films would be, which would be straight-up action films. This being a bit more of a crime thriller in a certain way, kind of progressing the part, because there's a lot of little things to add into this thing. What the 
rival situations are in the organized crime business. A lot of different characters kind of lay out whatnot, so they take the proper time to lay out all the different characters. A little bit of plot elements here and there, very clearly and well done. So it's like, it's not as rapid fire or whatnot, but it's like, it's nicely well paced. It doesn't dwell on things too long to kind of drag it out. I think the pace of the film is very good for what it has to be, for what the script has to convey to the audience, for all the different qualities that it has in its story lines. I think everything really kind of comes together very well in the film. That again, not the best Arnold film that you could possibly find, but I think it's a nice little gem that I think really deserves to get a little bit more attention here and there because it was negatively reviewed when it was released. People didn't really like it. It didn't make all that much money. Uh, I'm sure 18 million off of 11.1 million dollar budget is not a bad number, but it's still not as successful as the other films he had done at this point in time, which were really just total blockbusters. This was a little bit more of a misstep from a lot of people would say in his reign of the box office at this point in time from Conan the Terminator to Predator the Total Recall and T2 and everything that long stretch about six or seven years this is one that really kind of like wasn't quite what you wanted from an Arnold film wasn't quite what you were looking for and didn't quite hit off as good as it possibly could have been but it's still a good film that I think is worth checking out if you're an Arnold film fan don't pass this one up. You should definitely check it out when you have the time. And uh, once you've cleared out all the other big films, definitely check this one out because uh, after this, you got to go into the comedies, which are very, very hit and miss. So uh, check this one out. Raw Deal is a, is a fine find. I saw it on VHS a long, long time ago on the widescreen VHS, the DVD, and now this Blu-ray, which is an all-region release from uh, overseas that you can get on Amazon Prime easily. So it's like, it's a nice set, it's a nice Blu-ray, and it's a nice film too. So if you guys enjoy a raw deal, or if you find that it doesn't quite hit off quite as well for you, throw your comments below about what you feel about the film overall. So it's like, it's definitely one of those interesting films to really kind of talk about, about how well it connects with you. But it's like, all those fun moments in the film really make it the enjoyable thing that it is. Because uh, like I said, could have been dry, could have been a bit dull. Go lost if it didn't have the right person at the helm of it to really inject enough qualities that make it entertaining overall. But at least what you're going to say with Arnold that when he's trying, when he's at least trying, he's going to make it an entertaining film. Whether or not some things fall off here and there, he's going to at least have an entertaining performance that's going to deliver something worthwhile for you, hopefully. So, raw deal. Comments below, guys. Really appreciate you checking this one out. And uh, thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. Spread some links around your social medias on Twitter, Facebook, all that type of stuff, Tumblr. And uh, connect with me in the description below with all my links to my social media presence under at Ravenzone, wherever you want to go. So uh, definitely check that out, hook up, connect. And uh, I'm always dropping a little bit of things here on Twitter or a little bit on Facebook as well about what I'm kind of working on here and there, what's kind of brewing and whatnot. That's not really worth putting together a full video preview or update for. But it's like, you get little things in advance if you check me out on Twitter. So, definitely hook up there. And uh, I'm always posting pics. If I buy a new Blu-ray or whatnot, you might see a couple of pics there about what's uh, stirring in my brain or whatnot. What might be coming up soon. So, definitely check that out. So, uh, this is only the beginning of a couple of Arnold Schwarzenegger reviews. I kind of have the inkling to do. We're going to have to change it up a little bit. A little bit of Arnold. A little bit of some other action stars as well. So, uh... Keep checking out, guys. I'll be back very soon with another video or two or three or four. And uh, it's going to be a big month of March with a lot of films that I want to see. And I'll get a lot of reviews out. So hopefully I can stay on course and have a very productive month for you guys. So thanks for watching. As always, post your comments about Raw Deal below. I'll be back very soon. Some great reviews. So take care, guys. Thanks for watching. And bye-bye.